smashing Saxons. Welcome to the news at when. When? The Saxon era, when Britain was being shaped by invaders from mainland Europe. To find out more, we go over now to Bob Hale with the Anglo-Saxon Report. Bob. Thank you, Sam. Well, it's 400 AD. That right there is Britain. And here comes the king in a bedsheet. <laughs> no, not really. It's a Roman emperor because Britain is under Roman rule, just as it has been for more than 350 years. But all that is about to change because in the year 410, the unthinkable happens. So unthinkable, in fact, that I can't think of it. What was it now? Ooh. Oh, I know. The Roman Empire crumbles and the Romans leave Britain with the immortal line, don't forget to put the cat out. Something like that. And that's when the problems really start. With the Romans gone, the picks from up in Scotland decide to invade England. So the King of the Britons, Vortigern, hires a load of warriors from Denmark and Germany, places over there, to help him fight off the Picts. And amongst these warriors are two chaps called Hengus and Horsa, who decide that they like Britain so much, they quite like to keep some of it. Luckily, Hengus has a very beautiful daughter. Yeah. So in one of the weirdest deals in the whole of history, he offers King Vortigern his daughter's hand in marriage in return for Kent. Yep, Kent. And that's just the start of it. <gasps> Soon, seeing how easy it is to get your hands on English lands, there are Danes and Germans everywhere. Invaders from the German district of Angeln take over the Midlands and the North. Meanwhile, invaders from Saxony take over huge chunks of the South. Yes, England gets overrun with Angelns and Saxons, making it officially Anglo-Saxon. And you thought we just made that term up. So, there we have it. That's that. End of the story, end of the line, end of the beer, last dance, last chance, lights off, cats out, done. But not for long! Under Anglo-Saxon rule, Britain changes shape entirely, although obviously not around the edges. Inside, though, it all changes. The Anglo-Saxon invaders shape their newly won lands into seven major kingdoms, called Wessex and Essex and Sussex and so on. But it's not all plain sailing for the Anglo-Saxons. Oh no, despite their best efforts, they can't conquer Scotland for toffee. Which is a shame, as Scotland's got great toffee. While the other unconquered kingdoms, over here in the west, aren't exactly thrilled about the new neighbours. In fact, relations get so bad that King Offa of Mercia, an Anglo-Saxon kingdom shown here in Puce, whatever colour that is, builds a giant ditch cutting off the west of Britain from the rest of Britain, creating the border of what we now call Wales. So there we have it. Scotland, Wales, Anglo-Saxon, England, all sitting side by side in perfect harmony bar a little name calling and the odd local war. But not for long. Yes, it's 865 and lock up your monasteries because here come the Vikings. In no time, they take over every major Anglo-Saxon kingdom except for this one, Wessex, home of Alfred the Great, who clearly has a high opinion of himself. And for good reason, because Alfie and his family actually managed to hold back the Vikings. But not for long! Well, actually, it's for quite a while, but that's not the point. No, eventually Ethelred the Unready becomes king and gets so sick of the constant Viking attacks that he's presumably never ready for that he decides to kill every single Viking living in England, including the King of Norway's sister. Which, unsurprisingly, doesn't go down too well with the King of Norway, who promptly invades England, takes Ethelred's crown, and becomes the first in the line of Viking kings. There's Canute! There's Arthur Canute! There's a quarter of a Canute, except not the last one, until in 1042, an Englishman gets the throne again. It's Edward the Confessor! Hooray! And then goes and dies. Boo! And three different people start fighting over who should replace him. There's an Englishman, a Norman, and a Viking, which sounds like the start of a joke, but it really isn't. Especially for the Englishman, Harold Godwinson, who takes the crown and is immediately set upon by the other two. And while he's busy fighting off the Viking one, up here, the Norman one, a certain William the Conqueror, attacks down there. Yes, it's 1066, the Battle of Hastings, which signals not only the end of Harold, but also the end of the Anglo-Saxon England altogether. The end of the beer show, the end of the line, the end of the road, the end of the world we know it. But unless I calm down seriously, in the next few seconds, it might well be the end of dear old Bob. The oh, it's too late! Ah, Ugh. my mistake. It's just heartburn. It's just heartburn. Back to you, Sam. <laughs>